some fun stuff to talk about today. Hey, thank you for joining me. Um, we have a day I've been looking forward to for a little while now. We are going to have our Laminars Knit Along launch, or the Clue One launch, I should say. So if you have signed up for the Laminaris Knit Along, you should have gotten some links and some starting information for Clue One today in your inboxes. Now, if you're unsure as to where to find the download and things like that, um, and you say you got it or you deleted it or something, hey, thanks for joining me. Then you're able to now in Stone Stitch's website, if you've got um, an account, you just log in with your account details and once you pop in there to your orders, it'll give you a link to, hey, Riverview Knitting. Um, it'll give you a link to the Stone Stitches library. So your full digital download library will all be available there. And you're also able to access there any orders that you've made previously and you can pull up any downloads associated with them. So it's a very easy way to keep track of all of your digital downloads at once. I would suggest downloading them to your devices though as well so that you have them locally um, because you're going to, like with most websites, there's often a download, um, there's often a few different uh, ways that you can actually store them and if you download them too often, you can hit a download limit. I can help you with that, but I would definitely suggest storing them locally just to be sure. Hey Susan, how are you? Thank you all for joining me. I have a little fist of um, Nua Sport here in my hands. I think most of you out there have probably given Nua a shot before, um, but if you haven't, I'll just give you a close up of the yarn here. You can kind of see there's little bits uh, flecking in the yarn, and those are the linen, because the linen is, it doesn't fully twist in with the yarn, so it gives it a really tweedy um, effect and it dyes differently. So you've got, so I was showing you this downstairs last week, I think, and it's a little trickier to see when you're in, it wasn't quite as bright. So in the brightness, you can see, and particularly with the darker colors here, you can really see that the linen dyes totally differently. And so it gives that a much more, kind of a tweedy, less even look to the, to the dyes. And the yak is the smooth, it's, quite similar to cashmere. It's got that same quality to it, kind of very slick, um, runs easily over the needles and sometimes can lead to slightly loose, looser stitches because it's almost too slick on the needles. So if you want a little bit of help or some information about swatching and how the fabric that you're working with impacts um, your gauge, I, the Instagram Live last week did that, and also this week, um, we just published yesterday a blog post on swatching where we talked about that, where there's a link into the Instagram Live. And it's just basically talking about how the fiber has an impact, the needle type you're using has an impact, um, whether you're gonna swatch in the round or flat. Um, for this one, most of it's flat, so working back and forth works perfectly. But for some people, if you've got if the project is in the round and you've got a much looser gauge in the round then what you're best off doing is swatching in the round and i've given you a little cheat for that where you can still knit it flat but you, it's giving you the same gauge as if you knit in the round so that blog post is going to be useful for you if you kind of get tripped up with swatching or you find it a little bit overwhelming or perhaps you have swatched and you're trying to figure out what you should do with the swatch afterwards because often people make this big fuss of oh make sure you swatch it's really important and then if you don't know what to do with the information you get from a swatch it's not going to be very useful so it gives you a few pointers on the things you need to look out for and the things that you can use your swatch for. So can you give me a wave out there if you've, if you're joined the Laminaris Knit Along and if you're ready to, to jump in and get started with knitting. Um, if you have any questions about um, the project or how we're going to get started with it, pop them up there and I will read through as I'm talking and I will let you know, I will answer them to the best of my ability. Uh, or if it's something that's a little bit more involved, perhaps I'll do a blog post or a chat somewhere else with it. Now, I thought um, that I would actually go and start talking through Clue One, explaining how it fits together. Um, you'll have all of this as well in the teachable videos, but just 
perhaps seeing it on someone and the overall thing together might be helpful because in the videos we're looking at each little section at a time and so you don't always necessarily see the the whole of the project now the one i'm wearing here is it's got the darker color here which is chalk and plum and the other one is cerebellum and the second sample over here is frog on the wall and mosquito coast now cables on this one are as written in the pattern you can see each side is mirrored you can't see the bottom of mine here but that's because this was the first sample and often i'm trialing things out and i left all the cables the same and i realized as i got to the end of it that i didn't like the way that looked they really did need to be mirrored so a second sample got knit up where i did the mirrored cables and that one is correct but I still like this one and one benefit for me of having a second sample is that when the first one is then becomes the cast off and I get to keep it and I can wear it and I don't have to worry about keeping it as um, very carefully as a sample because there's something that's not exactly perfect with it. So that means I get to keep this cardigan now. So that, that's one, I, I won't say that's why I, I change things as I go along, but we'll just, it's just a nice side benefit of, of that happening. So with the cardigan, we are going, it's top down as are a lot of my cardigans. I'm gonna move this over here. So we begin with these saddles. And so it feels almost a little bit exaggerated to even call it a saddle because it's really just this little tiny striped triangle. You start along here and you work your double garter stitch out to the outer point. So to create the triangle, you're doing decreases as you work along at regular intervals. Now, this is a little small for my lady here because for, for this one, from the edge of the neck out to the edge of the shoulder, you're going, is what you're looking for for that actual uh, double garter. So you can see here, this one comes out a little bit further on me and comes up here. Now it doesn't have to come right up to the edge of the neck because as you can see, there will be a nice little, um, there'll be an edging along the side. So it's going to be from the edge of the edging to the side of the shoulders, what you're looking at. If your shoulders are wider, what you're going to want to do is use a larger size in this in the pattern so if you're like i know i can see from the sizing on the schematic that that is smaller than my shoulder size use the next size up make bigger triangles and then you can at afterwards when you come down i'll talk a little bit about adjustments that you can make hey trish thanks for joining us so once you've finished those you have your two little triangles and you want to make sure to mark the top of them because each side is slightly different, but not by much. So it's really easy to get it mixed up as to which is the front and which is the back. So I'll usually put a marker or a safety pin or something on the top part. And that way I won't lose track of which it is and it's much easier. So then I lay them down with those wider points facing each other. And we start on the back, pick up stitches across here cast on those stitches and then pick up those stitches. And so at that point, you've got your full width of your back stitches here. So uh, that means that like, for instance, if you decided to go for a larger shoulder width for those triangles, you need to stick with that for the picked up stitches across here so that that width of your shoulder is going to be wide enough to match the size you want for your body. So that's, you know, basically if your shoulder size does not fit with your bust size, perhaps it's wider or perhaps it's narrower, then pick the shoulder size that you want. And you'll start working down here with your double garter stitch for that first section here straight down. And then you'll work a little bit down further. Now, the changes you'll make then, if you want to change your bust size will come here. So if you've picked a larger size for the shoulders relative to your bust, that will mean that you want, won't need as many underarm increases for your size because you've added more stitches up here. So basically it means that you have a smaller difference between the width of your shoulders and the width of your bust. So you'll know that from your measurements. If you do your own measurements and compare them against the schematic, you'll know if you need to change that a little bit in, when you're knitting with it. So start with this width and then change to the amount of stitches you need for your bust size then. So if you're going from a larger shoulder size down to a smaller bust size, you will obviously have less increases down there. 
So do make sure if you're working less increases that you still work those rows so that your armhole depth isn't going to be too shallow. So if you're taking two rows out for increases or four rows out, then work those two or four rows straight before you start those decreases so you still have the same length in the overall yoke. So that's what happens when you, you know, you're going to increase down to here into your underarm. And once that's done, you'll pop those stitches aside and you'll come back to the front. And the front is almost the same with two differences. One, you're only working one side at a time, obviously, because it's a triangle, it's a cardigan, not a triangle. And also you're doing your neck shaping. So for the garment here, you can see I have a circular neck and it's kind of somewhere mid range. It's not particularly high, but it's not very deep either. And you can also change that in your garment. So if you'd like something that's a bit more scooped neck, what you will do is like here you can I don't know how closely you can see I've started increasing straight away after this because the saddle drops it down a little bit so I've begun first of all slowly increasing and then a lot faster across here so that it curves it into um, a circular shape if you want it deeper you're just going to work a little bit straighter and then you'll start your increases so you'll still have a circular neckline it just starts a little bit lower so it looks more like a scoop if you wanted a v-neck instead of doing first of all increases slowly and then increases quickly you'll just keep increasing at a steady rate like maybe every second right side row or something like that and it'll create a v-neck going down so it'll look quite different you will need to adjust how you pick up stitches if you do that so if you did a v-neck instead of picking up the next stitches and then the front stitches, you'll probably do the whole thing all around because the V is going to be kind of a continuation from this point down. But if you prefer a V neck and you'll get more use out of it than you would a circular neck, it's not a very difficult change to make. Just make sure that you still end up with the same number of increases to work across here. And if you have picked up more stitches here or, or you know, along the back, Make sure it's the same in the front so that you're going to have correspondingly the, this, the same size for the front as you do for the back. So that's where we end with the first clue. We're going to work down as far as the underarm. And when you put it on, it's not going to be all the way across because let me pull across here. We will be picking up our casting on stitches across there. So if you're like, oh, it's not quite big enough. Remember, there will be cast on stitches across the underarm area there. So it's not necessarily, particularly as the sizes get bigger, there's more cast on stitches. So don't get too worried if it's not perfectly sized without the cast on stitches. You can, if you're not sure if you want more, hang on till the next um, clue when we're casting on the stitches and you can, you can see if that number is going to work for your body size or whether you need to add more cast on, which it doesn't really, the only thing it's going to impact if you, if you cast on more stitches is you're going to use a little bit more yarn. If it's just a couple of stitches, that won't be significant. If you're adding a couple of inches, then you, you would want to factor it into um, the amount of yarn you're using. I actually had somebody, I think it was yesterday, was asking me about yarn and how much yarn for swatches and things like that are factored into a pattern. And it's, this is one of these things that every designer does it a little bit differently. For me, when I'm actually trying to estimate the yarn sizes, I've obviously start off with whatever size I'm doing. And from there, it's actually a mathematical calculation. I calculate the area of the garment put it against the amount of yarn I used and then from there factor in saying if this garment size used this much yarn how much does this garment size use and so that's the initial part but then on top of that you do like you said you need you need enough to knit a gauge a gauge square and also there is huge variations in knitters gauge themselves so some knitters use regularly either a lot more or a lot less yarn just by virtue of their knitting style it might be that it's often even if their stitch gauge is correct their row gauge might be a little different if it was tight you use more yarn because you're knitting more rows or if it's loose you use a little less because it's obviously not going to be as as snug so for that reason when i'm calculating the amount of yarn i'll always put a 10 percent factor of safety in so whatever yarn i calculate to say i say measured and said this needs exactly a thousand yards then there's going to be another 10 percent so another 100 yards will be added onto that 
to give enough leeway to allow for differences and to allow for knitting a little bit of a gauge square. And there's another advantage with NUA because NUA is, it, it, it comes in 50 gram skeins. But if you get your NUA and you weigh it, like with the tags off and things, you'll probably discover there's usually a couple of grams extra in most of the, um, most of the skeins. Now, from a designing point of view, I'm not going to take that into consideration because there's no guarantee that that'll be there. But for most of the skeins, there is a couple of extra grams. And so that means that if you're knitting a project with 10 grams and there's five extra grams in each one, you'll, even with no factor of safety, you're automatically going to end up with one extra 50 gram skein at the end. So I, I've had it happen in the other direction with yarns that I've been designing with previously where they actually were overestimating how much yarn was there. So it was, I don't remember the name of the, of the yarn, it was a hand dyed yarn and it said, oh, there's 400 yards or something in this project. Whereas in fact, it was considerably more, it was nearly like 500 yards. So I knitted away and we calculated the yardage, not the weight, but the actual yardage. And then when people were substituting, they were running into problems because they're like, okay, I'm actually, I need 500 yards and I don't have enough. And there was no way for me to know that because I wasn't measuring the yardage in the actual skein. But yet the hand dyer thought that they were doing people a favor because like, we've got all of this extra yarn that we've added in and um, you know, rather than 400 yards, it's 500 yards. But from a designing point of view and me putting the amount of yarn you would use in, it means that my numbers were inaccurate. <laughs> so another good reason to have a little bit extra yarn is usually useful because you're not worried about playing yarn chicken and you can always, you'll have enough for a hat or something, a small accessory project as well. So that's me talking about Laminaris. Um, I hope you all really enjoy getting started with it. Um, again, pop up any questions you've got either here or in my Facebook group, I'll be popping in there. Also on Teachable, um, you should, you've got access to that with the discount code that you got in the pattern and you can pop comments in there specific to the pattern. I know if you're running into problems or you want to ask about it and the benefit of them being in there is that anyone else working on that same section that is running into that problem would be able to get the question answered or if you're coming along in a few weeks time and if someone has already asked that question it'll all be down there in the comments so that's a great place to be able to put in any comments you might have that are very specific to the pattern itself. Um, so I will be back next week with I'll probably be ready to show you the Celtic Knits Club pattern two next week, which is extremely exciting. Um, it's been, it has been delayed. Any of you out there who are in the Celtic Knits Club, I've just got a notification that the very last box of blue yarn, or that's probably more like two or three boxes of blue, of blue yarn that are due to arrive are coming this afternoon. I'm keeping my fingers crossed that it arrives early enough that I can ship it out the door for the post this evening. Otherwise, it'll be first thing this morning. But if at all possible, I'm going to try and get it out this evening. Um, and that will mean then by um, probably I, uh, tomorrow evening or realistically probably Saturday, I'm going to send the pattern out with all of the updates to all of you. Um, you're going to really, really love it. Uh, Emer did an amazing job with the design um, and I had a lot of fun knitting through it because when I was doing the video workshops, I knit a second sample and was working through the whole project. So I'm knitting it for the first time in the videos. So I was kind of, it, it is actually quite helpful because as I'm talking through, I've got a fairly good idea then of the kind of um, problems you might be encountering or questions you might have as you're running through the project because because I'm doing it at the same time. So goodbye everyone. I'll see you all next Thursday. Looking forward to telling you all about the club.